Yo, what, what, what up? It's Razor Pabla! A string quartet of sexy girls playing classical crossover music. This all seems so familiar. Let's do the math. Do we have four girls? Check. And do they look good in short skirts? Mm, check. Two violins? Yup. Check. A viola and a cello? Check and check. Contemporary electronic dance beats? Check. Well then, they must be British group Bond. Wait a minute. No, it's a totally different band. Well, different like red and green apples. In a world filled with carbon copy boy bands and rock bands, I think the human race can live with just two sexy contemporary classical string quartets. So let's reserve judgement until we get to know the girls a little better. Introducing Escala. Hailing from London, England, the girls were in Singapore recently to perform for the Subaru Legacy series launch. The group came to the public's attention following their first round audition on British talent show Britain's Got Talent. The group made their way to the finals along with nine other acts by winning over the audience and the judges, and none more than American Idol judge Simon Cowell. Uh, this is, has gone beyond my expectations tonight because I've seen three or four acts who are simply brilliant, and you are one of them. Now, Escala did not win the finals, but with the help of Cowell, signed a £1.5 million deal with Sony BMG. And since then, the girls have released their debut self-titled album, which sports renditions and covers of rock songs and classical standards. Um, we formed four years ago, mm -hmm. in 2005. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. And um, we went on tour with a pop band, boy band called McFly in the UK, and we were all um, booked in, um, independently and formed um, a string quartet, girl string quartet, and toured with the band for about three weeks. And we all sort of knew each other anyway, mm -hmm. but it was the first time we played together as a group. Realised we had great chemistry on and off stage and decided to create a group, which was then sort of born after that tour. And we just did gigs, private parties, corporate gigs, you know, earning yep. a living. Um, so that was for three years. And then after three years of doing that, we were feeling a little bit like we needed to do something else, step it up a gear, you know, um, and this, the opportunity came along to go on Britain's Got Talent, which was just perfect for us. But how was life during those three years, just before Britain's Got Talent? Was it tough? Yeah, it was tough. And um, Scala was by no means our only way of earning a, a living. You know, we were all freelance music and music musicians. <laughs> <laughs> musicians. <laughs> like, uh, like Wiccans who play yeah, music, right? Yeah. Like, that's, oh, that's the God. jet lag talking. Last night it said Hongapore. Oh, man. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I forgot to tell you that. Vicky um, was a member of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in, right. in London. She was actually the youngest member. Um, so she was doing that and she'd then rush along to our gigs changing from her long dress into her short dress mm -hmm. Tassa, well, the, I was teaching um, Tassa and Shani were very much doing kind of pop um, you know playing for pop artists and, and all that kind of stuff so you know we're all doing our own thing and, and um, it's quite a gamble for us to have stopped our, our career actually and to go off in this direction mm -hmm. because yeah. you know um, Shani and I have been in that place before where a band didn't work out and Suddenly, you've lost your contacts, you know, and you have to start right from scratch and, and build yourself up again. Yeah. So, you know, even now, it's not easy. You have to work hard to get success. It's not guaranteed. But like all fast rising stars, controversy is never far behind. With Britain's Got Talent, a platform for undiscovered acts, the public cried foul when reports surfaced of Escala having professional experience prior to the competition. Now, it did not help that a source from the show told British press that the girls were personally invited to audition by none other than Simon Cowell himself. No, we, what happened was we played at a Christmas party that happened to be, happened to be for the X Factor production team. And um, the producers that produced X Factor produced Britain's Got Talent. And the producers came up to us and said, you're great girls. They watched us do a half an hour set. Um, said, you know, you sign. He said, no. And they said, have you ever thought about going on it? A program mm -hmm. like that, and we're like, oh, not really. You know, once you've 
you know, had a classical training, you don't necessarily think about going on a reality TV program. But, you know, it was what we needed at the time to raise our profile, and it was fantastic. So the idea was definitely suggested to us. We still we went, went down the, the same, same yeah. audition process okay. as everyone else. And, you know, everyone else has been training for years and years and years, you know, like the, the dancing dog didn't, you know, learn how to do that overnight, neither <laughs> did the contortionist, and, you know, because we've got a lot of flack for, oh, but they're already professional.